Hi again, everybody. This is another Jewelers Helping Jewelers with the Million Dollar Etsy Shop review. Um, today we are reviewing another Etsy shop in the fine jewelry industry. Um, I'm going to go ahead and dive in. And as you can see, this shop is a little different than the ones that we have done in that it is doing pretty good. Um, 104 sales at this price point. This shop is doing a lot of good things. So I'm going to try to talk about the good things that they're doing. So hopefully um, others can emulate it. Please don't copy. Please don't steal his designs and do the exact same thing. But I think we can all learn from each other and lift each other up. Um, all right. So as you can see, this, this artist, he has a lot of very unique stuff. Um, this, this King of Hearts handmade necklace is one of those things that does really well on the internet. People love seeing stuff like this. I would definitely leverage your social media um, and like your Instagram and maybe show a high quality video of how this is made um, because this is this is a very cool thing that I think young people would love to see. Um, young people won't be able to afford this, uh, maybe a few, but this is something that could drive a lot of traffic to your shop and you might have something that's a little bit more affordable, like a smaller opening price point piece that builds on this design. Um, that's one thing that I'm really big on is having multiple price points of things that are beautiful and interesting because someone wants this beautiful two finger flower design, but that's not the budget that they can afford. So something that's a little bit more plain, um, something maybe a similar design without the diamonds, maybe it's just cast metal that's high polished with the filigree and the detailing in the background and just some rubies. So it's this would drop the price significantly if you remove the diamonds um, and or use a different stone, perhaps amethyst or aquamarine, um, something like that to drop the price so that you could have your hero piece here, but also something that younger people can drive to the shop to or would be happy to spend money in your shop. Um, these mountings are great. I think this is a great to show the buyer the, the design and they can customize whether they want a colored stone or if they want um, what size and quality diamond they want to add. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and dive into your sales and see what is working. Um, all right, so these engagement bands seem to be a trend. Okay, this is one thing, um, these custom orders. I think that you're hurting yourself by not having people purchase a listing. So I don't know what this custom order was. Maybe you have a picture. You don't. Um, so Etsy favors when things are purchased. So if someone buys this ring here, let me try to highlight it so you can see. Um, they, if it, someone purchases it, it, it goes up in the search results. So if someone is customizing this ring, maybe they did something completely different, but I'm guessing if they bought it on Etsy, they found something that they liked and they said, hey, can you change something about it? So I would have them purchase the listing as is, um, and if the price is different, up the price to reflect that or give them a coupon code to drop that price so that um, you're helping your diamond earrings, for example, that listing by someone putting money into that listing especially if you're going to keep these customs on Etsy. If you don't want to do that, that seems like an annoying headache. Pull this custom stuff. I mean, I think that's against Etsy's terms of service to buy off of the site, so maybe don't listen to me, but I don't know. I would definitely try to get them to purchase inside the listing how they found you. Um, all right, so that's just a minor critique. I see that these wedding bands are doing well. Um, these rose gold wedding bands here, diamond earrings, the simple stuff. Oh, um, these mounting, simple mountings. I'm guessing that these are doing well because of the price point. Um, I don't know if it will show me the price, but I don't think so, but I'm guessing that these are your opening price point items. Um, I would focus on these a little bit and consider doing more designs. Oh yeah, so this is one of your top sellers. Um, I don't know if you have this in yellow gold and if you have this in white gold. If you don't, add it. Um, 
add an option where like this ring here where you can get all three together for this same ring even though I know people add that to their diamond ring they might wear it independently um, do more designs that are similar um, and I would maybe consider a black diamond option chocolate champagne diamond whatever um, to really I really like expanding upon designs that are already selling well that's kind of how you find your niche so he is selling some other things but they're kind of far and few in between um, I would definitely go ham ham and cheese <laughs> with things that are doing well um, and really expand upon these designs I do like and the same thing with these necklaces they look to be there's an obvious trend these dainty styles um, with diamonds I know that that helps lower the price point by using less metal so some of these airy open open work designs um, are great in the fine jewelry industry because they use less metal and smaller diamonds so um, I would definitely do that let me go back to your store real quick and see what you're focusing on okay so yeah I like these hero pieces in your banner so I would probably to bounce this is just opinion kind of um, I like the heart in the center and then I would do your dainty designs on the side so that people can see that your shop is about a lot of things and I would definitely be showcasing what's selling well um, again I love this uh, two finger design I would do an airy open work one to lower the price it is a different version um, and then when you come down here in your shop I would redesign this layout so that the airy designs that are selling well are intermingled in between all of these so you have like your hero piece and then maybe the same ring that's more affordable because it's smaller right next to it or right next to this ring would be the yellow gold one so people can see more of the breadth of your shop um, great oh yeah here's another one. I'm surprised this hasn't sold yet maybe that's a new design um, this kind of stuff I think is gonna work really well for you but it seems like you're on the right track um, I didn't check out your keywords because I'm guessing if you're selling stuff your keywords are pretty good I think you could use some work on your keywords think about those long tail keywords instead of scroll semi mount halo cocktail ring I like cocktail ring big huge ring I don't know if that's being punched in but I would do the same advice I've been giving other shops um, type in cocktail ring see what comes after that vintage like I, these might not be vintage but you could do cocktail ring vintage style so you hit this long tail keyword cocktail ring vintage silver cocktail ring white gold these these keywords need to be in the rel cocktail ring ruby cocktail ring moonstone if you don't have a moonstone design make one um, put that in there moonstones a lower you can get a high quality one for, for pretty inexpensive so that way you can hit that lower price point maybe even this ring here that I love <laughs> maybe I'm biased but um consider a moonstone version to really lower that price point if you're not afraid of it try silver try getting things under a hundred dollars and just see if you can get that to work um, someone might fall in love with you because of that silver ring and then come to you to design their engagement ring um, that's one thing about Millennials is they will they, they kind of want to build trust with you and if they can start out at something that's a little bit more affordable when they're 21 no 21 year old is gonna spend six thousand dollars but when they turn 26 if they've already built a relationship with you and they get married or 28 um, they might come to you for their engagement ring or you know their husband or wife or whoever but um, yeah I think there's a lot of good things going on um, again I think I've look at these keywords type in some of the stuff that you know your ring is already about so let's see um, print let me type in just princess cut and see what happens princess cut just the keywords you're already using see what's going on so princess cut sitch this is one thing that's standing out to me princess cut citrine ring maybe make that design um, obviously the ones that are higher up are searched more frequently like moissanite maybe consider a moissanite option um, princess cut diamond ring that ring that I just pulled this from this four word keyword in this order needs to be in that title and and this separately so you would have princess cut written twice but you will hit both of these long tail keywords um, let me see another one 
rings are are, are good. Um, earrings are even better, I think, because they're easier to gift to people. Rings are a little bit tricky because the sizes of some of a husband's shopping on here um, for, I mean, if it's not an engagement ring, if this is just for, a, you know, Valentine's Day gift or something like that, I think earrings are a much easier purchase. Um, so let's, let's look at some earrings and see how we can improve on this. Um, pink tourmaline. So I don't know if per, people are typing this in. So maybe, I don't know if you have, I didn't fully go through all of your items, but if you don't have a pink tourmaline pendant and necklace and ring that matches this set, I would maybe consider adding those. Um, let's see another pearl, freshwater pearl, freshwater pearl. Again, looks like people want freshwater pearl necklaces and then earrings, so it's a good place to be. Um, there's some, probably more keywords you can fit in here. Let me see what else. Butterfly. I think this is probably a good keyword, but... Okay, you do have butterfly necklace in here. Butterfly necklace pendant. You probably want butterfly necklace, comma, butterfly pendant, maybe. Um, butterfly. Let's see what comes up. First thing is necklace. So that's this is the best design for targeting the butterfly keyword. Um, butterfly jewelry should probably be in your title and tags. Uh, let me think. Maybe have an option without the diamonds so you have a lower price point version. Um, and another th little trick that I like to do is you could have a drop down menu here that says with diamonds and without. So instead of the price in the search results being two, 745, it might be um, $400 plus. So you look less expensive and you can get them into your shop and hook them and thinking, whoa, $400, that's a great price for this. Oh, I see now, it's more with the diamonds. But you know what, I kind of like the diamonds. I think I'm gonna pony up and spend a little bit more. Um, that's a little trick that I like to do. Um, great, I think you have really good breadth. I think there's a few things you can expand upon, but keep doing what you're doing. Um, let me see, another thing I like to do with established shops is to look at their reviews. Um, all great reviews, so you're doing everything that you need to be doing. I do like to find angry customers <laughs> just to see what's going on, but I don't see any. So seems like you have excellent customer support and you're doing everything that you need to be doing to succeed on Etsy. So great. Let me see your turnaround time. I know you, a lot of your stuff is probably custom. Free shipping, that's great. There's no reason to charge shipping if you're selling something for $2,000. Like if you really want to get nitpicky with your pricing, just add the USPS or UPS fee to the price, whatever it is. Um, with fine jewelry, I would always do um, at least two day shipping, if not one day shipping um, or overnight. You, you put it in your margins. I think it just is good customer service and Generally, I think those packet the, the less time a package is spent in transit, that's the less hands that touch it, and that lowers the risk of it getting stolen. I know you have insurance probably for this kind of stuff, but um, and you you probably already do this. This is kind of speaking to um, the fine jewelry industry in general. Um, you lower your risk of items getting stolen the faster it gets to your customer. Um, so if you feel like packages are going missing often probably analyze the supply chain a little bit, um, but also consider doing faster shipping. Um, and that's one of those things you can talk up to the customer. You can say, I'm upgrading you to overnight shipping, even though you already were going to do it. And that kind of people are like, oh, great. Thanks. Um, <laughs> all right. So I was going to look at your turnaround time. Let's see. One to two weeks from the United States. If this is already made, switch this to ready to ship in one day. Um, have, especially if it looks like you only have one in stock. Um, I don't know if this is made to order. If it's not, switch this for sure because that's gonna increase your conversion rate. Um, 
Obviously, it can be very expensive if you are a made-to-order brand to have all of this inventory um, built up for one-day shipping. Don't For fine jewelry, don't make it so you can do one-day shipping. It's probably not worth it. But if you already have something in your case, just be good about if you sell it at your brick-and-mortar store to come back and change the um, shipping profile on Etsy. Um, let me see your return policy. Um, for fine jewelry, you need to have a really good return policy. I would consider, um, I don't know if you can, I think Etsy makes it so it's difficult to change, but a lot of people in the fine jewelry industry like a really short return policy, but I would seriously consider longer return policies to make yourself a little bit more customer friendly. Is it really that hard to repolish a ring? It, it, for most people, it's not. Um, I think that'll increase your conversion rate. Um, I don't accept cancellations. This is standard, but consider accepting cancellations if you actually haven't started the ring um, because if you force them into buying something that they change their mind about, you're going to get a bad review. I don't think this guy's doing that. I think he's doing fine. I'm just, again, speaking to everybody in general. Um, the reason I like longer return policies is because of this conditions of return. Etsy will back you if a customer sends back a ring 60 days after buying it with two diamonds that have fallen out or whatever. Um, Etsy will back you, right? So why not have a longer return policy? Um, you can, if you implement a restocking fee, um, I probably wouldn't. Um, at this price point, I think it goes into this, the, the service industry. If someone has a pleasant experience returning it, they will still be able to write a review even if they return it after that period. So if they have a very pleasant return experience, they might still write you a five-star review. So minimally, you get that review even though you didn't get to keep the money. Um, they might, If they have a really pleasant experience too, they might come back to you when finances are a little bit more comfortable for them and they might purchase something else. Um, whereas if you leave them with a sour taste in their mouth, they are for sure never going to come back and they're going to tell 10 people to never shop with you. And it's just, I think, especially when you're working online, customer service is key. And I know a lot of people give me a little, a little bit of um, scruff for this uh, when I say on Jewelers Helping Jewelers that the customer is right 99% of the time. And people are like, no, that's not true. They're wrong 40% of the time. But, you know... They don't, know, they, they don't have an education in jewelry. They're not a, a bench jeweler. They don't know what's going on, so you can't fault them for that. Um, and if they have a negative experience with your jewelry, maybe your design was bad. Maybe your prongs were, maybe they looked pretty, but your prongs were too thin. Maybe, um, I know sometimes they smash it and they, they blame you. I know that that happens. Um, but that's one of those things that you should educate the customer on before they leave the store. Um, and be, be pleasant when you talk to them about those things. But... Um, Oh, I'm moving on 20 minutes. This is a long one, guys. I'm sorry, but there's a lot of good information in here. Um, yeah, I think I think this um, this shop is on the right track. He's doing all the right things. Um, there's a few minor adjustments with his keywords that I would make so he, he can increase his visibility. Um, again, his, his face and his name is here. Um, that helps in increase trust. Be smiling. Don't be like, you know, all grumpy in your picture. Um, you want you want to seem like you're a pleasant person. I might capitalize your name um, and put a period after Z just as a little. This is to me nitpicking grammar, but it doesn't really matter. Oh, here, this is a way, these, this keyword here, um, this is a great space to talk about your shop. And this also works into the search algorithm. So you don't have a lot of space. That's probably why he's missing a space here because I think there's like 20 characters or something. Um, but none of these are keywords delete this whole thing and switch it to something that people are using to find your shop. So you could write eternity, diamond eternity rings and necklaces, which doesn't sound like, oh, that's kind of a boring business, right? Because you want to describe your business here. No, this is, a, this is an opportunity to manipulate the search algorithm a little bit and um, help people find your shop so that when someone types in um, eternity, diamond eternity ring, you get boosted. I don't know by how much, but just a hair, right? And I think when people Google you, um, I'll save that for another video. That's pretty complicated. But when people Google you, that helps in the Google search results too. So, 
um, definitely change this part here to something that's searchable. Um, I like your logo. That's professional. That's great. So I think you're doing all the right things. Um, your policies are fine. Estimated shipping times are fine. Um, I would consider opening up. It looks like you only sell to North America or perhaps only the United States. Etsy is very friendly to sellers. So for I, I would contact support. They're very friendly with sellers. And, and I would contact Etsy at support.com and ask them to be sure. But whenever a case is opened against me from an international customer, as long as the tracking indicated that the package left the United States, Etsy will cover you, even if the customer says they did not get the item. Um, this is another topic for another day, but generally if a customer didn't get the item, it's because they didn't pay their duties, which is annoying. Um, I, would, I would look into the, especially at this price point, I would take the time to look into um, how to import these properly and make sure you fill everything out. Don't let a customer bully you into not paying duties and not um, writing the proper amount on the package, all that kind of stuff. But there is, I would say maybe 10 to 25% of my customers are international. Um, they are a little bit more of a headache because of the duties and all that kind of stuff, but um, that's 10 to 20% more revenue that you could be getting, especially in Europe. Um, I do not restrict against any countries because the ones that are more likely to scam um, just don't buy because they can't get PayPal accounts. If someone, it, it's a pain in the butt to get a PayPal account if you're not an American. So if someone is able to get that, that's probably because they have money and they're fine. They're, they are your customer. Um, I would do a little bit of research and I, I'll, I'll pull up the exact Etsy policy, but Etsy's policy is the seller's obligation to international customers ends once the package leaves the country. So I would consider selling to, to especially Europe, um, Japan, China are some of my big customers. Um, Southeast Asia, I get a lot of Southeast Asian customers. This is also a different price point. I sell it like the below $50 price point, but it would not surprise me if someone fell in love with your stuff in Australia. Oh, I sell a lot to Australia. Um, so that's a like I said, you could increase your revenue by maybe up to 10 to 20% simply by being more friendly to international customers. Um, that also diversifies you because a lot of fine jewelers probably don't sell to those countries. So you might be the only American, you know, selling that type of ring. So that lowers your competition a little bit. Um, yeah. So I hope that, oh, that's a long video. I'm sorry, guys. I've been rambling, but I'm hoping it's good. Um, good information for everybody. Again, um, please drop a comment below if you have any questions. I have a Facebook group um, that you can ask me personal questions in or again, Jewelers Helping Jewelers. If you're not already a member of that Facebook group, that is great for fine jewelers um, and um, fashion jewelers alike, but especially fine jewelers, it's a great place to ask questions, um, to learn from each other. We're all lifting each other up. We're all helping each other. There's no, we're not hiding information from anybody. Um, that's a great place. Um, to ask general questions, ask me about the Etsy questions, <laughs> but ask jewelers helping jewelers about the um, fine jewelry questions because I am not a fine jeweler, but I am an Etsy expert. So again, um, subscribe below if you liked it uh, and feel free to reach out with any questions. Bye.